three garden plants share a common characteristic. If we wait a few days, we see that they have all produced flowers. We call these flowering plants. There are flowering plants of many kinds. Some, like this snapdragon, are only a foot or two high. But there also are larger flowering plants, like this lilac bush. And still larger ones, like this catalpa tree. Many other trees, including this maple, are also flowering plants. Early in the spring, before the leaves of the maple are out, we can see the flowers. The maple flowers are very tiny, but they are flowers, much like the others we have seen. Not all plants are flowering plants. Some trees, like this pine, do not have flowers. Ferns are not flowering plants either. And plants such as mushrooms don't have flowers. Flowers are found only on certain types of plants. Let's look at this lily to learn more about flowers. Flowers are usually the most attractive parts of a plant. They are also the parts responsible for the reproduction of new plants. How is a flower involved in reproduction? Let's watch one over a period of time and see. After a few days, the flower begins to wilt. Soon, the outer parts fall off. What is left looks like a long, thin stalk. The thick part becomes the fruit of the lily. As the weeks go by, this part grows larger and larger. A fruit we know produces seeds. When the fruit is full grown and it is opened, we can see the seeds inside. When the lily seeds are planted, we know that they may, after several months, grow into new lilies, just like the one the seeds came from. These lilies may then produce new flowers, which in turn may produce new seeds. By producing new seeds, flowers take part in the reproduction of flowering plants. To understand how flowers produce seeds, we must learn more about the parts of a flower. The large, showy parts of most flowers are the petals and sepals. These are the three petals of the lily. Somewhat smaller are the three sepals. In the lily and some other flowers, the sepals and petals look very much the same. In the very center of the flower are the stamens and a pistil, the parts that produce the seeds. In the lily, there are several stamens, but only one pistil. Some flowers have more than one pistil. The pistil has a round, fuzzy tip. Each stamen has, at the top, a sac-like structure that produces pollen. Using the probe, we can transfer some of the pollen from a stamen to the pistil, where it clings to the fuzzy tip. Carrying pollen from stamen to pistil is the first step in producing a seed. Often this is done by bees and other insects. An insect may carry pollen from a stamen to a pistil in the same flower. Many insects carry pollen of one flower to the pistil of another flower. Pollen may also be carried from flower to flower by the wind. The next step in producing a seed occurs inside the pistil. Cutting it open helps us see the inside. We can show what happens in a pistil once pollen has been deposited on the tip. From the pollen grains, tubes grow down the neck of the pistil toward the egg-shaped bodies in the base. These are called ovules. Eventually, the tubes reach the ovules and sperm cells from the tubes go inside. Each ovule may then grow into a seed. 
This is how seeds are produced in the lily. Remember, stamens and pistils are necessary to make seeds. The large pistil and smaller stamens of this bellflower are easy to see. Now let's look at a daisy, another kind of flower. We usually think of each blossom as a single flower. Actually, this is a cluster of many flowers called a head. Each part that looks like a petal is a separate flower called a ray flower. At this end of each ray flower are the seed producing parts. In the center of the cluster, are flowers of another type called disc flowers. Each of these also has seed producing parts like the other flowers we've seen. So the daisy is a flower composed of many flowers. We call this a composite flower. Another composite flower is the dandelion. The dandelion head is also a cluster of many tiny flowers. Dandelions are commonly found growing in open fields and lawns, usually along with grass. This grass has tall stems that are a part of each grass plant. At the top of each stem are grass flowers. They do not look like other flowers we've seen because they have no petals or sepals. But each grass flower has seed producing parts, stamens and pistils. That's what makes them flowers. Flowers of this kind can be found on all the plants we call grasses. These are the grass plants we call wheat. Here are the pistils and stamens of wheat flowers. The seeds they produce are what we call grains of wheat. Similar flowers can be found on the corn plant, which is another member of the grass family. On the corn plant, all the stamens are together at the top of the stalk, forming what we call the tassel. Lower down on the stalk, sticking out from each ear, are the fine threads we call corn silks. These are the tips of long, thin pistils. The pistils extend deep into the ear to tiny ovules from which seeds form. When the seeds are grown, we recognize them as kernels of corn. Each thread-like pistil is linked to a single kernel. These are the seeds formed by the flowers of the corn plant. Here are seeds in a cucumber, which is the fruit of the cucumber plant. If we look at a cucumber plant growing in early summer, we can see the flowers that produce the seeds. There are two kinds of flowers on this plant. Some of the flowers, like this one, have no stamens. This kind of flower has only a pistil. Where does the pollen come from needed to produce seeds? The pollen comes from other flowers on the same plant, like this one. This kind of flower has stamens, but no pistil. The stamens we know produce the pollen. So on the same cucumber plant, two kinds of flowers take part in producing seeds. There are many kinds of flowering plants. All flowering plants, remember, may grow from seeds, which form in the flowers, the seed producing parts of the plants. <laughs>